you know if you are working on a rehabilitation solution you will go bankrupt in no time you have to figure out what game you are playing are you playing the game where there are a lot of established players uh, competing in a tough market or you play a game where you coexist with the large guys and add value on top of them before making the solution you know we had gone to india everyone was laughing but after that one deal he goes to the us the us guy says that oh at your backyard there is a solution which we are using and you should go and talk to him hi everyone welcome to foundership's webinar series very excited to have all of you here today um, today we have uh, a very good uh, mentor at foundership and also an ex founder of diabito whose startup got acquired by livon go so very excited to have his uh, you know journey to be shared with us from idea to exit so where we will cover on on both the gtm and the launch aspects of it and then eventually ending up to an exit so very warm welcome shrikant uh, very excited to have you at uh, foundership signal and levers uh, podcast and uh, webinar series thank you so much thank you so much bimlesh uh, the pleasure is all mine uh, yeah it is uh, it, it is it is definitely an exciting time to be here um in the startup ecosystem at this time and also with with foundership as well so thank you so much excellent wonderful so uh why don't we jump right into it uh, shrikant uh, you know so talk to us a little bit about uh, how diabito as an idea came about in you know in 2012 uh, right when even internet uh, mobile phones were just beginning to head off the block cloud infrastructure was not very great at that time uh you know and trying to solve a very large problem around diabetes uh not a easy thing to take on so would love to hear what inspired you to get started on this particular idea how did you choose your initial days around uh this particular startup and we'll take it forward from there right 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 um so you know i would like to just touch upon what i did before try sure. to as well because that was like a you know an encore or if you call that or or, or people <laughs> Uh, or something like that uh, uh requel to that and encore to my other startup getting <laughs> dying and stuff like that so basically what was happening is that um i came to bangalore i'm right now in mumbai but i, I came to bangalore in 2009 um with um trust me on this one with 3000 rupees in my wallet <laughs> and 3000 rupees in my wallet and 3000 rupees that's it zero in my bank it was like 500 rupees in my bank and uh, i i you know i didn't have a place to stay in bangalore so i stayed at a uh, at a at a guest house and it was a really shady guest house of course and i wake up to find out that my wallet is stolen oh. so which means, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and this was in uh, 2009 and uh, i i just had I, i i did not have anything nothing in my bank nothing in my wallet my wallet is not there so i go somehow i have like a phone i call up my friend and say that this is a situation please lend me 10 grand <laughs> because i need to go back to bombay <laughs> i don't know why i asked 10 grand and stuff he did i went to bombay and i'm like i was really really depressed that oh my god what what will i do uh, and you know i said that okay screw this you know i'm going back to bangalore again and he was my friend was also like you know man you need to come back here you need to get here and and I'm like okay yeah cool we we go there i mean i go there take a bus go to bangalore this time he says you stay at my place you know so i stayed at his place and uh, you know we were just like thinking that um, what to do what start up to do and uh, you know iphone had just launched and i and and uh, and see jobs had launched the apple uh, the app store and we you know my friend was an also an mba i am also a stupid mba so we did like some stupid research and we found out everyone was like uh, the app the app thing is going to be like the big thing the next big thing and so so we said like okay you know what we should start developing apps 
so you know we put a ad uh, in uh, in nokri or something like that and we hired one part time developer okay she was she was just married she wanted money she was working at infosys and uh, and we somehow convinced we didn't have an office we didn't have anything nothing so we convinced her let's do this and she said like okay yes and you know we hired her we started making apps and in two years you know we had a whole building and we had 70 people wow, making wow. apps day in and day out you know so that was like a factory you know factory making apps we were doing revenues of like close to about 250000 dollars it was just like you know and then we started getting acquisition offers you know from hinduja we from repro from um, there's a uh, macmillan uk and that kind of stuff and then you know it was we were doing pure services business day in and day out you know like almost in, in, i mean products no one was doing it but what happened while this was happening you know my parents both my mom and my dad they are living with type 2 diabetes and you know my father you know he called me up frantically saying that uh, hey have you seen my my diary where i would write down my um my readings you know my my the glucometer readings and i'm like dad i'm in in bangalore you're in bombay i would have seen it yeah, i'm like what's the thing and he's like actually you know some of the the hospital he would go to they had replaced i mean they had misplaced the the um, the file and uh, and you know he was very diligent he would track his blood sugars at all times and uh, and uh, and you know make make sure that everything is in place and stuff obviously like you know the the hospital misplaced the file he had to do it again and i was like man you know i run a app services company you know we can definitely do this you know we were also doing some bluetooth experiments and stuff like that and then you know i just took a flight back to bombay and said that okay you know what i'm going to uh, solve this problem i started interviewing people like you know i'm a pharmacist as well so i started interviewing people and asking that you know is this a problem and uh, and not in india though i mean i was asking only in the us and in the uk because you know the glucometer penetration was not that much it's not that much even in india right now you know so everyone said that yes this is definitely a problem and you know that just gave a, a a spark like okay this is something you know this is really cool what i did was you know i did like some things which don't scale right so what i did was that i was i was getting like fascinated with this with the coding thing and stuff like that this is so what i did is that you actually hired one uh, uh, just a recent graduate and said that hey will you teach me to code and he started teaching me to code in c and uh, and then afterwards i i studied objective c and then afterwards i studied embedded c i start i took like an arduino i started like hacking arduino and that kind of stuff and you know is one thing led to another i learned to code i started making apps and uh, you know my apps were making more money you know before anything as well right and i started making right. medical apps you know some one app was making 800 dollars per month and i'm like wow this is like this is some real real amazing stuff right people are ready to pay because that was a time when you know there were no medical apps nothing and i thought that okay wow if this is the case that you know the apps are working obviously i have seen that you know in my previous company as well we were making apps day in and day out they were working out i made a huge mistake and that is like you know i went and made a hardware right mm -hmm. um and uh, you know that was just a rookie mistake you know uh but you know nevertheless you know we realized that it took us only 4 years only 4 years to make a uh, a hardware and uh, you know luckily you know we were very good at marketing we were just hyping it up to a point where people were actually thinking that you know we are a valley based startup and stuff <laughs> and uh, uh, one fine day um uh, uh, the vp of uh, intel g company he comes to india and you know he has seen our our indiegogo campaign and that kind of stuff he actually thought that you know we are scammers i'm not kidding okay. and he thought and he said that you know you guys are only four people and you know he just it was just kind of like you know making sure it was like kind of a due diligence thing and we were like yeah we are just four people and he's like man you guys have just killed it like you know people who have like 100 people company they could not do it and you have done it that's really amazing and he placed the order for straight away 1000 devices 
and oh, okay. and that was like wow that is just brilliant right and uh, we got a c uh, c certificate uh, and then we got it we, once once we started telling everyone hey you know what intel g is using our devices everywhere in in germany people started uh, you know in finland in europe i mean everywhere in germany as well we started getting orders and um, and uh, and while we were just like shipping um you know we also got uh, ucl which is a very prestigious uni university they did a, a simple alpha test with us as well and uh, we were on to something we were we, we are already raised a small seed round when we were looking to raise more money and that's when you know what was happening is that i was already speaking in us i was speaking and we would go to europe um in diabetes conferences people already knew fortunately right even before okay. our solution could hit the market people knew that there's this startup from india who's working on this and the same way in the us as well people knew our competitors knew us very well and uh, you know when we were raising money they we just got an offer saying that instead of uh, you know we are okay to fund you but how about uh, you getting acquired and uh, you know the rest is history oh okay okay fantastic fantastic awesome, awesome. So you already had experience in building apps uh, for the international market and a family driven uh, challenge or a situation really brought you brought your attention to explore solving a very large problem amongst global population right what made you to choose us as a market uh, versus india as a market so one you mentioned the glucometers were not uh, very heavily used in india right what other factors led you to choose uh, us as a market and not india as a market for your initial uh, validation or even pilot uh, launch of your hardware and software uh, business great question so the thing is that obviously it's a no brainer right india is the uh, the diabetes capital of the world we've got like millions and millions of undiagnosed diabetics in right. you know in spite of like having 150 million people at this and stuff like that right um and because of the great market we, you know we were like okay this is a great market right however you know we later came to know that you know even though that it's a great market but nobody even like big companies have not actually been able to make economic sense out of it you know so which means that there's a market but can you extract money from that market that was a big question mark and uh, you know fortunately while we were building it we faced it first hand right if we were going uh, and you know to hospitals doctors they would like you know see the solution they would give me a pat on my back saying that wow this is amazing you guys are young and they have done it great uh, have have a candy and now go home <laughs> right and it was very disappointing because the thing was that first of all um you know this is an uneducated market you know so i'll tell you this as well so when when we were building apps right i would take like these case studies to like big organizations yeah you know like hospitals or even big organizations saying that look guys apps is the future you need to have apps and everyone would laugh at me Th this right? is at 2012 2013 time frame this i mean when i was building apps this is much earlier 2009 much earlier. right 2009 to 2012 right, right everyone would laugh at me and they would be like bro like seriously you are a very smart kid probably you should go and join some consultancy firm like whatever dcg and stuff like that don't waste time selling this right and now you know how it is right the same thing with the diabetes thing as well you know we would tell everyone that you need to measure your blood sugar because without the data you cannot take any actionable steps to to our disappointment even like the top doctors from india you know they would tell me on my face that glucometers are a big scam by pharma company and i was like i would be like shell shocked i'm like if you know and this is this comes where like you know doctors are revered and you know they are considered god in our country and that stuff and if they tell you that if they tell the patient that don't waste your money on on strips which cost like 45 rupees or something like that obviously they would be more than glad not to do it you know they would you know that that was the situation so if that is a thing that you know if if the top doctors themselves are prescribing not to use glucometer then our battle is completely lost then and there itself right right so it's but versus when we would go 
uh, to to NHS. We would go to uh, in the US, right? The already the, the the tailwinds are already there. People already know the importance of using glucometer. The glucometer strips are are covered by the insurance, right? So they can use as many strips as they want with their insurance being paid and stuff. It is a much easier, you know, a, a task was a much easier task to sell our solution, which is just an add-on, and it just makes it much easier to not only for the patient but also for the entire healthcare workers who are involved in it, right? right. So they already understood the importance. They are like, if the patient is at home and and it's the and you know and they're getting a hypo in the night, I'm, I would straight away come to know where when I'm like, you know, 500 kilometers away and that. So it was a no brainer to sell that. Plus the, the, uh, the payment parity is, is much more higher in the US and in, in there. It is a much more easier thing. And we were like thinking that, man, we wasted so much time in India, uh, you know, selling this. And we had a pro huge problem because, you know, when we would go to US investors, they would be like, Look, if you are targeting on India, then we are interested. But if you are targeting on in, in the US, then we are not interested. We okay, could, okay. you know, we were not in a position to explain that this is the ground reality of India. You know, we cannot do it. We just cannot do it. Um, that was the situation. So okay. that's why, you know, more, but still, obviously, you know, I pitched to more than 100 investors. And out of that, you know, 20 investors signed up finally and that kind of stuff. So. Healthcare is really hard. Hardware is really hard. Healthcare and hardware right. is more a harder. combination. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So before we go a little more deeper onto you know your GTM and launch in the US, talk to us a little bit about what the product actually did. Yeah. So basically, you know, um, also you know, I always uh, since childhood I have this knack of making my life very difficult <laughs> so we were like very very ambitious so no in spite you know we first started working with the hardware then we started working with the app then we started working with the api then we started working with the web application then we started working with the cloud so it was a complete suite um and then you know we were also working on remote population healthcare okay. as well so then we were working with the complete suite and that was a big mistake or definitely a big mistake we should have just like started with only an app first see how it was how it was going not look at hardware um and then you know move to a uh, cloud okay so your 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 hardware would basically have a strip attached to it where the blood test would get done automatically yeah sorry about that so basically the hardware what it would do is that it would connect with glucometer so our hardware would plug into the glucometer and okay. then it would wirelessly transmit the readings from the glucometer into the smartphone from the smartphone the readings would be pushed onto the cloud and we had given access to the api so to the hardware so directly like you know the other like intel g and other companies they could directly get those readings without using our app, they can they could just uh, integrate the API into their app or into their cloud and directly get the the readings into their uh, system. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that that's pretty cool. I re I remember when I was at uh, at Mises All Scripts, we had seen a device which uh, a glucometer would get attached to a phone directly, and the glucometer endpoint would have a strip as an input to the glucometer. Correct. So here's the thing, right? Our 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 basic uh, premise was that look, if you go with that glucometer, right, then you would have to give that only glucometer to all your population, right? You know. But our premise, our USP was that our device was compatible with ninety percent of the glucometers which are available directly into the market. Fantastic. So you know, basically these these were biggies like Johnson and Johnson, Roche, um, and you know. All, all you know, all the, the uh, other uh, arc ray glucometers as well. So it was ninety so percent compatible. When did you make this decision? Because it's a very fundamental and an important decision as a startup. Right? You build yet another glucometer by yourself, and you compete with all the biggies, or you build a product which is compatible across all these guys, and you coexist. Right. I always uh, talk about this as a part of a GTM approach. Right. You have to figure out what game you are playing. Right. 
are you playing the game where there are a lot of established players uh, competing in a tough market or you play a game where you coexist with the large guys and add value on top of them so at That's what exactly. point did you what point did you make this decision and what led you to make this decision so um the 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 decision was actually like very very uh, easy to make one because obviously you know you if you want to compete with these biggies who have like you know billions on billions on research and and whatever throwing obviously we cannot compete with them second is you know getting an fda uh, approval for all these kind of devices on an average it costs like about 2 million dollars and about 2 years obviously that is like a complete no and the third thing is that obviously you know we wanted to be a platform solution not an uh, an independent solution so we wanted to be a platform you know and and come up with come up with a solution so that you know the big guys in the us can you know basically use our solution to take all the reading so exactly your words you know just coexist make it easier for all these big guys to take the data because data is the oil right we had right. already so basically hardware was just um uh, an enabler right? right that is what it was but you know to make an a hardware it requires a lot of investment time and money um and plus you know we were we are looking at 2012 when right. then it did not even exist i don't think even till now it exists as well yeah yeah talk, talk to us a little bit about what is your uh, how did you think about the indigogo campaign was that a very strong pre planned approach to raise that initial crowd funding to fund the hardware uh talk to us a little bit about the preparation and the uh experience and the outcome of the indigo work campaign right so i mean exactly so basically i think this is before product hunt right, right. and uh, and so indigo go and kickstarter were the uh synonyms of hardware you know launch packs that kind of stuff so if you are coming up with a hardware it's better that you know it's like you know you you launch there get the money it validates your idea as well and uh, with that money then you can go a, a, a long way and that's exactly what happened you know uh, the indigogo campaign um validated our idea um you know it got eyeballs um you know the uh, the intel g uh, personnel they found us via the indigogo campaign and uh, you know we funded our our uh, our, our manufacturing if we already have you know so we we took that interest we went to the investor said that look we already have uh, you know this much money and you know people are already interested now does it make sense for you to invest and it was a no brainer like they are like oh yeah it's validated already now these guys just because investors or are are looking for to fund something which is basically you know if the things are breaking because you know there's too much demand then they they would be like right. yeah please take our money right i mean that's, and, you know, that's one of people, the top signals Yeah. Right, exactly, and uh, that's exactly what happened. So it was a great thing to do. Fantastic. So now you got the money uh, to fund your production. You you launched a bunch of uh, devices. Uh, I'm obviously assuming that you had a lot of pre-order devices through the Indiegogo campaign. So your production primarily fulfilled those pre-orders, and then some would have been left for you to actually launch. uh you know to the other uh, market so talk to us a little bit about uh, uh wh- how did you think of launching in different countries and in the us after your indigogo campaign uh what sort of uh, thought process and gtm strategies that you thought and implemented and what sort of help you got from the us local ecosystem or from the ecosystem in india to help you have a successful market launch in the us Right. Um, so yeah first of all we know we were complete noobs we are still complete noobs as well uh but you know this is a massive massive task it's just like you know david versus goliath kind of a situation the only thing is that you know we were completely <laughs> uh you know oblivious that you know how big a challenge of how, of launching into a different market is right um uh, now that you know i work with like bigger organizations now i know that you know what kind of budgets people even allocate um for launching into diff- into different organ- into different markets so but somehow you know unknowingly we just made a decision that you know we should only focus on the us okay. um because obviously launching a hardware 
you know, the main thing is the support. Uh, and that support needs to be local support, right? Um, um, I don't know how we would have been able to do with a small five people team supporting uh, the US market uh, if um, if we would have gone like really full fledged, you know, that is that would have been a really a nightmarish situation, to be honest. Um, so, you know, later on, I learned that, you know, uh, you should only focus only on one market for for these, you know, primary reasons. And primarily, you know, you should look at um, if it's if there's a hardware involved in it, right, then you need the distribution support first. And then later on, everything else comes up. Right. right. So, um, again, these were these were the learnings which came up after we like, you know, took this decision and stuff. But this, these were the learnings which I will take them to the grave. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. So how did you how did you go about building your distribution channels out in the US? Right. So B2C was out of question. Right. Was for sure. You know, because B2C is, uh, you know, um, for the hardware. You know, we we would have to like you know go with like uh, WalMarts of the world and those kind of things, and with the buyers and stuff, we did try a buyer as well, um, CVS, um, but uh, you know we, we we were not we did qualify for that because they were like you know probably what you can do is that you know give us like a um, you know maybe five hundred thousand devices we will try to keep them on our shelf. And if they sell, we will give you money and stuff. But you know, we didn't want that kind of a situation because we didn't have the money to manufacture one thousand devices and stuff, right? So then we thought that okay, B two C does not make sense. Uh, so the only option is B two B. So first, you know, sell the device to a to a B two B partner, take the money. Uh, with that money, manufacture, and then deliver, and then with the with the next tranche, get the profit. That was the idea okay excellent so was there any criteria that you chose uh, that you defined uh, in in choosing your distributors you started with one part in the us you chose distributors that had all across uh, us as a market access what 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 went through your uh, process of working with distributors it was rather like you know rather than we choosing where will they choose us you know? right <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff because it is again distribution is not an easy game at at all at all it is like really 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 difficult so as i said that once we decided that okay we are not going with b2c that complete distribution game was was over right, right. um then it was just like you know getting in touch with people and uh, on the b2b side getting in touch with like bigger organizations bigger hospitals and then okay and then basically letting them know that okay we exist give our data our real world data and then afterwards uh, do a demo and and go go ahead with that okay so with your b2b approach uh, did you were you always into direct sales between diabeto and the b2b partner or did you also appoint a bunch of resellers no so we we have, we have, we appointed uh, one reseller in europe but that was not doing well. Okay. Um, so then we decided that okay, we should just directly sell it. Okay. So you deployed a direct sales uh, team, and where was this team located? Was it? So we had one. US? We had a one full-time employee in the U.S., and okay. uh, so he had he had experience with hospital sales and big organization sales. So, um, you know, so he was basically helping us with the U.S. sales. Got it. So by the time you were actively selling out in the U.S., how big was your team? Uh, apart from the sales guy in the US, you had any other part of the team out in the US or most of them were out of India? Only one sales guy in the US and everyone here. So we were including co-founders, we are seven people, including our US employee. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. That's an amazing uh, size and team to be in when you're out there to launch a hardware and a software driven Absolutely. product. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, we were very, very frugal because we didn't have any other option. But right. in the in the end, that proved to be a very big boon, right? Our burn was almost nil, almost nil. Right. So that 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 made us made our things so easy. It is unbelievable. Fantastic. So, to, uh, so I I is it fair to assume that by two thousand 
15 or 2016 17 is when you were able to productionize your product Correct. launch it out in in the Correct. us market and in global markets through resellers and at what point in time uh, did the acquisition conversations uh, happen right so basically as i said that we took like four years only to build it 2016 like end of 2016 uh like around august or something we started selling right and uh, we were doing these things for like about eight months or something like that and we got the acquisition of in like eight months oh okay fantastic yeah yeah but again you know for these four years when we were building you know we were just marketing that's mm -hmm. all we were doing you know we were just marketing we were just saying that hey this is something which we are coming up with this is gonna be so you know just like because obviously it was unprecedented, right? Who takes four years to launch, right? right? But unfortunately, it's, it, that's that's the normal time for a hardware medical startup. So, but we, we never knew that. We thought that probably maybe max it will take one year and we'll be done with it. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, so you got acquired eventually by Livongo, and uh, Livongo happened to uh, you know be run by glenn tellman who is the ex-founder of all scripts and you know i'm i'm an ex all scripts guy so have have a lot of association with all scripts and glenn tellman so talk to me about how long did that process take uh, what kind of due diligence went in uh, you know to make this deal closure and right. what was the cycle time that it took to do it so um the thing is that uh, again you know our marketing uh, really, really helped. So basically, what was happening is that you know I used to be called for um, these keynote speeches and stuff like that um, in in Europe as well as in the US. So I would you know the the thing was that Levongo's um, you know top uh, execs already knew about us because you know they 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 had attended my keynote speeches and actually you know they told me uh, later that you know they already they were like you know eyeing us since three years time. Oh, they wow. did not tell us they did not get in touch with us and not, uh, whatever but they knew that there, there is this startup in india yeah, yeah. and so and i'm like wow that's amazing so the thing was our acquisition you know money in the bank so right from starting our uh, mm -hmm. conversations our first conversations to the money in the bank it happened in record time of three months wow including due diligence everything Fantastic. Three months time, so we were absolutely lucky um, for 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 this kind of situation. But you know, when we after the acquisition happened, you know, the Intel guys they told me that you know they wanted to acquire us as well. Um, but you know, if they would have given us an offer, it would have taken on an average nine to twelve months time. All right, All right. So oh, fantastic. Yeah, that is really amazing. Yeah, that 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 actually was a great marriage between Diabeto and Livongo because Livongo is also on the mission of solving both juvenile diabetes Absolutely. and for diabetes for adults because Glenn Tullman's uh, son himself Correct. suffers from type one diabetes. Correct. And uh, right. that's how uh, you know I I saw that as a great uh, marriage of missions uh, being aligned together and uh, and taking that forward. So post acquisition, what happened? I I saw that you continued to head <coughs> Livongo's uh, you know initiatives out in India from a technology point of view. So talk to us a little bit about that phase before you decided to start up again. So I mean, to be honest, obviously we we had the golden handcuffs, uh, but at the same time, you know, we had to do the technology transfer and that kind of stuff, and it took easily like about one and one and a half years time. Um, to happen and stuff. So plus, you know, Levongo wants to start um, a, a massive team here in India as well. So we helped them, uh, you know, pave the way for for that. And uh, you know, once the technology transfer and everything was done, I thought that okay, this is the time that uh, um, you know I need to move for uh, my next rodeo. Fantastic, beautiful, fantastic journey, Shrikant. Uh, congratulations on that. Though it is about two years. Uh, old congratulations, but nevertheless, uh, always good to reflect back and see how the journey passed on Absolutely. and uh, what were the wins and the learning. So if you were to summarize, uh, you know, your entire diabetes journey, uh, you know, healthcare, we have got some, you know, we got some founders uh, who have joined in today. 
right? Uh, from an India-US market, your learnings and, you know, since you have been an healthcare entrepreneur, I'm sure you would have been approached by a lot of fellow healthcare entrepreneurs as well in, you know, in the last few years. Uh, if you can summarize some of your key learnings and takeaways that if you were to do a healthcare startup again, what would you watch out for? And with today's changes in technology, what do you see as an opportunities as a closing remark? That would be awesome. Right. Okay. So the first things first is that, you know, I would, if I would start a, a healthcare startup again, um, I would definitely look for strong tailwinds. And uh, which means that, you know, I wouldn't want to reinvent the wheel um, again or something like that, you know, basically because I've seen that, you know, if you try to do that, it, it just completely backfires. Uh, I would leave that to the Elon Musk and, uh, and Jeff Bezos of the world to do that. But if you are like, a, you know, a, a nobody, but, you know, who's basically has an idea to change the world, but does not know how, I would definitely look at one thing is the market and the second thing is the tailwind which means that you know whether this market is ready to pay or not as i said that you know we we, we were we were very naive and thought that diabetes is a great market but unfortunately you know it's a market which is not ready to pay in india right. um so that is one thing second thing is that obviously you know most of the times so what happens is that again you know i i i still talk mm -hmm. to a lot of entrepreneurs and and I would tell them that yeah, they would come to me and they would ask me that, hey, this is what, uh, is there an insurance game? Can we do that or something like that? Obviously, you know, insurance has come a long way, but still I feel that, you know, we are not a, a, a public healthcare system where the insurance pays that. So, um, you know, I would stay away from that uh, uh, deal as well, because obviously if you're talking to like insurance companies or any big organization, the the sales cycles for these you know companies are like nine to twelve months so do you have that kind of patience and and money to actually survive that kind of stuff or not um and uh, and then the, the the last one is that unfortunately you know when it comes to b2c solutions for healthcare right uh you need to basically check that you know how um willing is your population to use technology that is the major because you know we say that technology is the enabler yes it is but for you and me we are who are sitting in a metropolis but if your solution is for someone who's like for tier two or or something like that you know it is still you know everyone has mobile phones yes but you know everyone's mobile phones are for TikTok and and whatsapp and instagram but do you know do, will they even use your solution for um, for whatever right uh, that is something and pay for it. That is something, you know, again, so coming back to the same, these two factors is that market and the, the readiness of the market to pay for that solution. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is really awesome. Uh, Shrikant. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, for this reminiscence, if I were to call that, uh, I want to go back in time and, you know, share with us, uh, you know, the entire uh, journey of what happened, uh, with this, we will, we will come to a uh, close of today's, uh, you know, conversation and we'll open up the floor for questions. Um, so I see a couple of entrepreneurs here. Uh, Shashi, Kashyap, uh, Tanmay and uh, Yogi here. If any of you have questions, we can then bring you online and, and have a live uh, question that you can ask uh, Shrikant about. Yeah, hi Shrikant. Hi Bimlish. Can hi Shashi, see? welcome. Yeah. So firstly, congrats, uh, Shrikant, have heard of you, you certainly connect you in through Bimlesh and all nice to hear your story, very inspiring one, could connect to a lot of things. And uh, yeah, I think um, things that you kind of, I can resonate is I've also been a healthcare entrepreneur in Indian space, built LISS, HISS and serious challenges, etc. So my question is again, uh, you kind of took the B2B route to kind of uh, in the US market and kind of uh, hit the market over there, right? So were you also, is it primarily a solution that kind of takes the readings and kind of gives it to the clinicians and other things over there? That's what the problem you are solving because everything has to be very sharply defined, right? especially when you're operating in the US market. Correct, absolutely, yeah, abs that, that is a great question. Um, so that's why, you know, um, we made sure because you know we are we are playing with data, right? And uh, we made sure that you know our our uh, solution was 
hundred percent accurate, if not ninety nine point eight percent accurate. So yeah, that was the main thing that you know what we were solving is that you know they were all these all these devices were offline devices. How would you get access to the data um, without any kind of solution? So that is that was the problem that we were solving. So I also heard you say you made the mistake of building your hardware took four years and kind of did it, and then you say we'll go the ecosystem way, we'll be an enabler kind of thing. So your final solution was a mixture of your own hardware plus others' hardware. Is that the right way you did it, or you took only others because it keeps changing so fast, you know? No. So the thing is that it was only our hardware which was which would go on top of the others' hardware. So the thing was that you know if people were using would have insurance the insurance would give them a glucometer for free hmm. obviously and, and stuff and all they had to do was basically take our our solution and put plug it in on top of their uh, glucometer okay okay oh, on top of the glucometer itself yeah, because correct. their glucometers would not have internet capability yes right or an app this is when you, this is you're talking about 2017 2018 types so you have an Acu1 glucometer, for example, on on Acumen glucometer you attach Diabeto hardware. So the readings from Acu1 is transferred to Diabeto hardware. From Diabeto hardware it comes to the Diabeto app and the mobile app. From the mobile app it goes to the cloud. Once it goes to the cloud, the the physician or the other clinicians in the hospital. And the insurance company will now have access to this data. Correct. Okay. Very nice. Were you also adding certain recommendations, analytics also along with that saying, or you just were focused on passing the data because that's a different challenge, you know. Uh, you have to be accurate towards certain things. Nothing. You just was passing the data. Yeah. I, I mean, we had planned everything, all over these kind of things, but you know. I, I, I had started getting sleepless nights only thinking about uh, these kind of things. Recommendations is a, is a whole new universe, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, we had planned it, um, but, uh, you know, before that only we just got acquired. It's fantastic. So those are my couple of questions. Congratulations. Very inspiring story. And then you left that. I have also seen that Bharat seems to be a very big market, but a paying market is a very minuscule of the whole thing. Absolutely. And all of us learn it the hard way. Now my new venture is all about GDM for health, focused on don't touch this, get there somewhere so that you don't make those mistakes over there. Correct. Absolutely. All the best. Thank you. We'll connect again, Shrikant. Yes. yes, please. Thanks. Thank you, Shashi. I think we've got Tanmay and Kashyap as well. Yeah, okay. Sure, we'll bring them on. Hello. Hi, Tanmay. Tanmay. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much for such a wonderful insight. And these insights help, uh, you know, founders like us not to commit those mistakes Absolutely. and not work, uh, walk on those lines. Correct. Right? So uh, we are basically into preventive care. My request and uh, uh, I require your suggestion because first of all, you find that uh, primary care where there is a disease condition there only the issue is there in payments, either the insurance is not ready to pay or the Patients are not affording it. In preventive care, uh, what should be your suggestion for a startup company to make it successful as a B2B? Because I believe B2B is the more viable option at, to start with. So what should be your suggestion from your side that uh, a startup company should adopt when so much of uh, hurdles is there? Because in prevention, nobody is ready to pay. And Absolutely. preventive, I don't mean only blood test. I mean, uh, it's a whole gamut of behavioral change, healthcare behavioral change, uh, adopting healthier lifestyle. So all those things, how you can suggest us to make it more accepted in the marketplace? Again, the same thing, right? I mean, if you, if you look at into the bigger spectrum, uh, you know, I said that, you know, first look at the market and look at the tailwinds, right? So unfortunately in India or Asia for that matter, right? So basically if you look at the entire ecosystem, we, are, we don't have any, um, you know, healthcare. So which means if you are, if you don't have the healthcare, you have to shell from your own pocket. So we, and Indians especially, you know, we are notorious for that, that, you know, only when we have suffer a heart attack, then we realize that I shouldn't have eaten that samosa or I shouldn't, I should have walked or I should have 
slept and that kind of stuff but by that time it's too late they you know they will pay like n number of um, um, you know amount of money to get that stents and that kind of stuff but if you go and talk to your father you know for that example saying that that you need to walk he'll be like okay yeah whatever you know yes. so ka dekha jayega because it's the culture the tailwinds are not there but now if you go now you take the situation turn around the situation you go to like europe or in you in uk you know the insurance is basically you know they make sure that you know they take care of the population you know because they have vested interest it's not that you know they are like some amazing <laughs> you know government something the main idea for them the insurance is, is that they have to avoid hospitalization because it is reverse it's completely because if if the if the hospitalization happens then it is a load on their system which means they have to pay right and they don't want to pay right so so on an on an average if you get a fracture in the us you you get a pay a bill of $50000 versus now you go and you do you charge like say $5 or something like that it's it's a no brainer right will you are you ready to pay $5 or or your insure or you know insurance pays like 50000 that's what it is so that's why if you are into preventive healthcare it's a no brainer that you go where the insurance is covered where the, there's healthcare system so you target europe or us right um we are targeting and for mainly the outpatient and we are targeting uh, mainly those areas where insurance is not touching but uh, the problem is that uh, making people pay for the model or making people or the companies corporates pay for the uh, preventive care is still not evolving it's right. not evolving and probably it will never it never will because there are vested interests i mean so in the us as well you know if you are working on a rehabilitation solution you will go bankrupt in no time because a rehabilitation uh, uh, sector or the department in any us hospital is the least paid uh department so for you know what i mean because i have got my money you know uh, after the operation rehabilitation there is no money for that for the so outpatient means, kind of thing there is no exactly that's what it is so that means uh, it is only possible to make it successful if insurance company uh, recognizes that effort or the government policy or health policy recognizes that but unfortunately if, if the government policy is also involved in it imagine that there are top 5 insurances in the us and like you there are 5 million startups trying to get on a 10 minute call with these insurance companies how bad the situation is i don't want to scare you but i'm just letting you know <laughs> of the situation yes yeah. so tanmay i hope i answered your question yeah yeah, yeah. thank you so tanmay these are all part of very critical queries or uh, you know questions that one has to ask as part of a gtm strategy right uh, where your market is uh, you know whether you want to go b2b b2c if in b2b which segment of b2b customers are you going to chase for what are their levers for growth there what are their challenges and how does your solution solve for their uh, challenges even understanding the motivations for them to buy your solution or even to partner with you right uh, so uh, you know so at foundership we are uh, we are having this program uh, which is open right now uh, shrikant is also one of our program mentors there we call this as gtm for india health tech uh, right so happy to share that link over to you and take a look at it and uh, you know if it makes sense for us to help you to solve that problem we can we can help you have a solution to this problem and really have traction around what you have built or even tell you that hey this is not a problem worth chasing for end of it time is money right uh, you may you may also have an opportunity to pivot your current solution alter it and go after a different market in a different country as well right so these are all very critical questions as part of gtm so thank you so much thanks for this thank question so i'll bring kashyap on stage Hey Kashyap, can you? Yeah, hi Shrikant. Yeah, hi, hi Kashyap. Hi, I so, I know Kashyap as well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have talked earlier, but it was really fun to you know hear about your story in detail, you know, and you. you're very upfront sharing your learning and lessons. So really appreciate that. 
So I had a quick question. Mm, so, um, you know, I, I heard that you had a strong opinion about, you know, US market versus Indian market, right? But would you like differentiate between like um, top down versus bottom up in terms of like go to market strategy? Like, um, you know, if you were to like, let's say bottom up approach uh, for B2B, uh, for example, uh, right? So I have worked in the US market as well and I saw it's, it's really complicated, right? It, it's, it's, you know, a lot of legacy system and they have their own problems, uh, different from, in, uh, you know, problems in Indian healthcare, right? But they do have their own problems, right? But on the other hand, I see there are some things favorable in Indian market, like especially, you know, uh, Shashi earlier use that term like Bharat, right? So, so do you have an opinion about like, uh, you know, Indian market, like especially, yes. you know, with less regulations, yes. uh, uh, more freedom to make a decision, you know, more, uh, you know, easier go to market, you know, like, do you have an opinion about, you know, taking like bottom up approach? Like, would you? Yeah, you sure. Know? So, you know, I, I forgot to mention this. What was happening was that, you know, um, there was a time when we started selling in the US, but we started realizing that, you know, the legacy systems, and the regulations is is really a pain in the neck right so but you know fortunately what was happening is that you know the indian uh, ecosystem had also come to know that you know we are selling in the us so and even you know so i'll tell you what before making the solution you know we had gone to india everyone was laughing at us we had gone to germany they would be like oh a brown guy and <laughs> and coming up with a solution please don't even talk to us right but but after that one deal, you know, people from Germany would come in and saying that, oh, your, your solution is being used in the US, please come and meet us. In India as well, like, trust me, this one, you know, what happened was that this guy from Surat, okay, who runs a very massive clinic, he comes in his Mercedes to meet us. And he's like literally telling that, please give us our solution. He comes to know, and he, you know, how does he come to know about us? He goes to the US, the US guy says that, oh, at your backyard, there's this solution which we are using and you should go and talk to him. So, you know, so these signals, we are still in the society where, you know, if you have a t-shirt from US, oh, wow, it must be a good quality. But mm -hmm. nevertheless, people don't know that, you know, this t-shirt is manufactured in India and exported to US <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then we come. Yeah. So, yeah. So okay. for sure. And then, you know, then when, when they were, they were asking for a solution, they would never ask like, do you have a C certificate? Do you have a 510K approval or something like that? It's as simple as that. So it was just easy, so easy for us with just one one USD. So definitely, you know, I mean, um, now, but now, obviously now the ecosystem is different. Now you have to, you know, India is also like waking up, Indian FDA is waking up to all that kind of stuff. But still, if you still have a chance, um, then, you know, you, you have to play by ear, you know, because as I said that, you know, my, my journey is completely different than yours. My times were different than which are the, right now, you know, then people did not even believe in, in, in med tech at all. There was no money, but right now people, if you have a solution, if people are using it, people will throw money at you, right? Left, right and center, that kind of stuff. So, you know, don't take everything at, at face value, right? If someone's someone's journey is one way that's that is what they took at that point of time due to that kind of situation so i yeah. as i said i'm just saying my experiences mm -hmm. but again if you think that you know this is this is really working you know mm -hmm. you should just do it you know as as, as bimlish said that you know time is money and especially mm -hmm. for a startup you have i keep on saying that you have only two main resources which are limited one is time and second is money so yeah take the chances yeah, it totally makes sense. And maybe, you know, you could start in a market like India and then expand to the US market or vice versa. You know, it could happen Definitely. like that. And Definitely. You like, could I do mean, either pilot or proof of concept or, you know, like. That's exactly what I'm doing in my current startup, right? Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to do your pilots in India. People are really ready to do it and stuff like that. You know, you can have a great uh, GTM. You can have a great, uh, you know, pilots, private betas and stuff like that. Just so easy to do. 
cheaper, less time consuming. Yeah, that's it. And the consumer is a consumer, a paid, a pay, a paying consumer. I will never differentiate between a paid consumer, a paying consumer. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Thanks, Kashyap. Thanks. Good to see you again. Yeah. Same here. Hi, Shrikant. Hi, Yogi. Hi, Yogi. Hi, hi. Uh, Hi, hi. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, wonderful session, although it came at a short notice, but uh, really, really uh, meaningful, I think, uh, quite interesting insights. Uh, so uh, my question is this. Uh, I think it's, it's more from the uh, the angel investment side. Uh, I am building a startup which is into aid tech for healthcare uh, with uh, one of my co-founder who happens to be a doctor uh, working for NHS in the UK. And again, this is uh, not exactly related to, you know, uh, or uh, it is not in the same context where your businesses were, but I think uh, since you have been through that journey, you will be able to guide, comment on this. Uh, so I have found an investor who is in the US. He's more than willing to come on board, but then he is pushing us to incorporate maybe in Singapore or maybe in US. At the moment, I have a company which is incorporated in UK. Uh, so he's like, I will put my money provided you incorporate either in the US or either in Singapore because you know somehow I don't have uh, kind of let's say trust or confidence on the Indian system. And the UK is also no because you know uh, there are some issues with uh, opening the bank account there. I mean we do have this transfer wise uh, uh, bank account, but not a traditional bank account there. So any suggestion, any uh, uh, comments on how do I uh, kind of nav navigate this uh, situation there? So uh, now we are dealing with, uh, with a local thing here. Uh, I, I, again, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, let me tell you that, you know, I was in this situation. I am in this situation right now. Um, so um, I don't know how to actually give you because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, so the, the I'll tell you about what the Indian law says, right? You know, if you are an individual, like an Indian resident, then you cannot own more than 5% of an overseas company. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, that is the, that is what the RBI and the law says. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are, I'm not going to tell you, uh, the, the, uh, there, there are ways which Indian mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, I'm not going to tell you that because I'm not a lawyer. Um, on a public forum, I'm not going to tell you that. Um, but uh, you know, um, the official way is to basically uh, take um, uh, uh, official approval from the RBI and telling the and making your uh, case that you know why do you want to incorporate in Singapore or in the US and not in India. And and you know, unfortunately, you will have to go through your lawyers and your AD bank, which is basically that bank will you know, put forward those kind of situation, uh, that kind of proposal to the RBI. Um, the waiting times because of the COVID are about eight to 10 months or maybe even more than that. Um, so there, there are other um, ways which other startups, especially the YC startups are doing. Probably, yeah. you know, um, you know, Bimlish can help you out yeah. with that. Where, where is your investor where coming? Where is your investor coming? Uh, he's a Canadian. He's a Canadian. He's a Canadian. My partner, uh, he's in the UK. He works for NHS. He's a gastroenterologist and I'm in Bangalore. So for any investment, one basic thumb rule is they need, an, uh, especially international investors, they would definitely need two things. One, from their point of view, how the transaction can be made easy. Uh, so that is why they insist on a US or a Singapore because it has got more global uh, penetration. That's right. Yeah. Second is you need to have a bank account. Without bank account, mm -hmm. you will not get even a local UK investor to invest money in you. You can That's have right, yeah. financial transactions over a transfer wise account, but you can't get investor money in that account. Uh, that's absolutely right. Yeah, uh, that mm -hmm. is one. Second is if you create a US or a Singapore company, uh, your India entity will always be a holding entity, uh, will be a, a subsidiary entity. The US or yeah. the Singapore will be defined as a holding corporation. And the India Corporation yeah, yeah. is a subsidiary which is meant only for operations, like paying out salaries, right. paying out bills, and yeah. so on and so forth. So yeah. this is a typical structure uh, that many companies, even though they have incorporated an Indian company and then trying to get a foreign investor, uh, this is a typical route that they would uh, take. And uh, you know, yeah. uh, there are lawyers available who can help you set up a U.S. company by sitting in India, uh, because uh, or uh, setting up a Singapore company sitting in India. 
uh, the advantage is tomorrow even when you have to raise a further round or when there is an mm. M&A that will happen. The M&A will happen around yeah. the holding company. And okay. once you once an M&A happens on the holding company, the subsidiary company automatically gets acquired. Right. So that's sure. how those transactions sure. work, and you know that's why most of the investors, international investors, they look to have a U.S. incorporation done or a Singapore incorporation done. Makes sense. Yeah. Thanks for that. Fantastic. Cool. So, sure. so uh, I think we are just out of time. So thank you so much, Yogi, for uh, for coming in. No problem. Thank you for taking time out uh, for this uh, answering these questions, Srikant. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, you so much, team. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thanks. So with this, uh, you know, we'll come towards the end of uh, today's uh, session. As I said, we are running this uh, GTM for India Health Tech uh, startups. Uh, it's an eight-week program where the whole objective is to help you find your early adopters. If you already have early adopters, then how we can help you find your next wave of customers. So this GTM program is help you prepare your go-to-market strategy because preparation is vital uh, in healthcare because it's a long game. If if traditional startups have a 10-year window from idea to exit in healthcare, Srikanth is one of those rare rare uh, you know abnormalities I would call it. But a traditional healthcare health tech company will take anywhere between one year to 15 years or one year to 20 years to find an exit right uh, that's the long game in healthcare right. and uh, you know so Srikant, i shashi uh, and and some more people from the indian healthcare ecosystem we are partners with hospitals labs so if you got solutions for any of these markets we will leverage our networks to get you access to these uh, customer markets so in this eight-week program, it's a it's a it's a very intense program. Take a look at it. Uh, applications are open. Uh, it's a zero equity, a program fee based model program, and we'll be happy to talk to you okay, in case you're interested to explore this. Uh, look forward to having you around for the next uh, Signal and Levers a webinar series with Foundership again. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.